In this video, we'll do this example problem. We're actually only going to do the first part, part A. I'll leave part B for you to do. So in this one, a 37 kilogram crate is placed on an inclined ramp, and then when the ramp makes an angle with the horizontal of 23 degrees, so it must be starting low, and then it's being increased until the angle here hits 23 degrees. When that happens, the crate starts to slide. So then the question is, what is the coefficient of static friction between the crate and the ramp? Okay, so here I've drawn the problem. I noted that it just starts to slide here at the angle of 23 degrees. So what is known? Uh, angle theta, we know mass. Gravity might be important, we know that. Uh, just starts to slide. So if it just starts, so it's, it's not moving, it's not sliding, it's not sliding, it's not sliding, and if you hit just the point where it starts to slide, what happens at that point? You are at the maximum frictional force. So we know that at that position, you must have been at F S max. So we know that. I think that's all we know. And unknown, we're looking for coefficient of static friction. All right. Well, what should we use? F S max. We're looking for mu S. The only equation we have that's got mu S in it is that fx is less than or equal to mu s times n. So we've got static friction here. fs max, that's when fs is equal to this. So we know fs max is mu s n. If we need forces, we should draw a free body diagram. So if I draw a free body diagram for that crate, let's see, there's gravity, mg, there is normal, pointing directly out of the surface, and with those two it would slide down, except we know it's just started to slide, so we're looking at kind of at the instant, and it's just going to start to slide. So at that instant, there is a static force of friction up that direction, and it's actually right at the maximum. So Fs max N Mg, you know what, this looks like one of those problems where we shouldn't break it into X and Y, we should go parallel and perpendicular. So this direction, that's the parallel direction, this direction, that's perpendicular. So sum of forces, in the, we really care about the parallel direction, right? Because that's the direction that Fx, Fs is in. So sum of forces in the parallel direction is mass times acceleration in the parallel direction. And just before it starts to slide, right, when you, you're at that 23 degrees, it's not moving, so the acceleration has to be zero. So the sum of forces in this direction has to be zero. So that would be, this is the parallel direction. So sum of forces, that is, uh, if this is the positive direction, we've got part of mg, mg times sine of theta in that parallel direction. So that's the component of mg pointed that way. And then we've also got this fs max, that's the opposite direction minus Fs max equals zero. I can rearrange this. Fs max equals mg sine theta. Okay, now we're getting somewhere. In this equation, we used to not know normal force or Fs max. Now we know Fs max. We still don't know the normal force. So, 
I guess we're going to have to deal with the other direction as well. So if we do that direction, sum of forces in the perpendicular direction. It's not accelerating up off the ramp or down into the ramp. So that has to be zero. And that is, let's see, this direction, that's the normal force. And then there's a component of gravity minus mg cos theta. So we can rearrange that to say the normal force is mg cos theta. All right, now we know this, we know this, we know that. We can put them all together to find mu s because mu s equals f s max over n so that is m g sine theta over m g cos theta those cancel mu s is just sine of theta over cos theta and sine over cos is tangent so mu s equals tangent of theta which is tangent of 23 degrees and that is 0 0.424 and there we go we had to use translational equilibrium in the parallel direction and the perpendicular direction and we had to use the static friction force to get us there